Most of our IoT devices are insecure and vulnerable. It is high time to learn how to make them more secure, also because unsecured devices will no more be able to use valuable services without using the HTTPS protocol. Already now, Google services, for example, do no more accept unsecured connections. But is it complicated? Let's find out. Grüezi YouTubers, here is the guy with the Swiss accent, with a new episode and fresh ideas around sensors and microcontrollers. Our ESP8266 and ESP32s support such secure connections. In this video I will show you how to change our unsecure sketches in a few simple steps. And you will learn some basics about encryption and certificates, which you can use during the next discussion with your boss or your colleagues. We will cover How does SSL work? We just need the most basic knowledge. How can we access cloud services using HTTPS with our ESP8266 and ESP32s? How can we create trust? And how much more memory is needed to do that? Internet traffic is not at all secure unless your devices use the HTTPS protocol. This protocol has two purposes. A. It encrypts all traffic transported across public networks and B. It creates trust. You always know who you are connected to. Both are very different things, but this protocol combines them into one infrastructure. For our purpose, it is essential to know that point A is mandatory if you want to use HTTPS. Point B can be omitted if you do not fear very sophisticated attacks. Let's start with number one. How does SSL encrypt our messages? It uses public key cryptography. What does this mean? Before the invention of that concept, both sites had to use the same secret key and horsemen had to be sent out to bring the key to the other side. Using the same key for encryption as well as for decryption is called symmetric key cryptography. Mathematically, it is quite simple and fast. What is the difference between the two cryptographical methods? Public key cryptography uses two different keys and therefore is called asymmetric. If a message is encrypted with a public key, only the owner of the private or secret key can decrypt the message and vice versa. The public key itself has no value. Because of that, it can be distributed over unsecure lines. No horseman is necessary anymore. You can broadcast it everywhere. Great concept! By the way, this is why the inventors of this concept got the famous Turing Prize. Back to our case. If your device calls a server using HTTPS, it gets the public key of the server. Because this key is part of a thing called certificate, you find it when you press the padlock sign in your browser and press show certificate. First, you see the validity of this certificate, which is vital for our future steps. Here, its validity is only a few months. After that, it will be changed. Then you go to details and you find the public key. Our device starts to encrypt messages using this key and the server, having the corresponding private or secret key, can decrypt the messages. This asymmetric key procedure is slow because it is mathematically complex and therefore not suitable for fast internet traffic. This is why our device sends a symmetric key to the server. This is secure because the message is encrypted using the asymmetric keys. Now the server and your device have the same key and can change to a symmetric encryption, which is much faster. Fortunately, all this heavy lifting is done by the Wi-Fi client secure library, which we have to use instead of the Wi-Fi client library. We also have to use a different port, 443, and not port 80 to talk to the server. The rest of the code stays pretty much the same if we only want to use encryption. Cool! Our device is future-proof and safe without lots of work. Point number two and the encryption part of point number one is covered. 
because our device uses SSL and encryption, all servers accept our connection. Point number three is more complicated, but I show you how to succeed also here. The internet offers two fundamental ways to create trust and Ivan from Espressif created two different example files for that purpose. I used these example files to create two sketches for the ESP8266. Please upgrade first to version 2.4.2 .2 in Boards Manager. Otherwise, you will not find these examples. The two example files are called HTTP request and HTTPS request CA cert. I changed them that they access housemyssl.com, a web page which shows us how good our SSL capabilities are. This page can also be called by a browser. In my case, after checking the different cryptographic capabilities of my browser, its verdict is probably okay for the Chrome browser. Let's come back to the sketches. The difference between the two is how they create trust. HTTPS request uses a so-called fingerprint and HTTPS request CA cert uses a certificate for that purpose. How does the internet create trust? It starts with a very reputable company everybody can trust. This company is called Certificate Authority. This company can issue certificates to other trusted companies, not without making sure that they are also trustworthy. Just like the mafia, where you have the capo or boss, which publicly trusts a few people around him. These trustworthy entities also can issue certificates and because we know that the capo trusts them, we also trust these people. As we can learn from Wikipedia, each mafia tribe has its own procedure to create this trust. I do not know if the mafia method were the basis of HTTPS. Probably not. But if everybody posts this fact on social media, maybe it becomes the truth. In HTTPS, all its trust is created using a chain of unbreakable certificates. We can see this chain in the browser if we press the rider Certificates path. If we move up the chain, we see that the root certificate lives much longer. If we could build our trust on this certificate, we would not need to change it every few months. This is precisely what our browser does. It goes up this hierarchy until it reaches the root and checks if it knows this certificate. Then it can trust all certificates in the chain. There is not only one mafia organization and there are also many certification authorities. Your browser knows all of them and with each browser update this list is updated too. By the way, if the capo dies or gets insane, we have a problem with the certificates issued by this organization, which happens from time to time and creates a lot of turmoil. This can also happen in the internet, as we saw in the Netherlands when DigiNoter became insane and created more than 500 fake certificates. But how our ESPs deals with certificates? Because they do not have the storage capabilities of a browser, they usually only store one certificate or even less, the fingerprint, an abbreviation or hash of a certificate. Now we finished the trust part of point number one. Back to the examples. The HTTPS request example uses the fingerprint for the bottom certificate and cannot go up the hierarchy to the root. And as we saw, this certificate usually is only valid for a few months. And because we usually hard code the fingerprint into our sketch, it stops to run after a short time if we do not regularly update the certificate information. But the fingerprint also has an advantage. It is very short and straightforward. This fingerprint works with many servers, but not always. Because companies can use different servers with different certificates, we might get an error message even if we think we have a valid fingerprint. In my case, Google did not accept the fingerprint presented in the browser if used by the ESP8266. Let's summarize what we know till now. To access HTTPS web services, 
it is sufficient to use the Wi-Fi client secure library instead of Wi-Fi client. We do not need a valid certificate because the service sends one to our ESP at the beginning of each conversation. Only if we want to make sure the service we call is really what we think, we can check the validity of that certificate. We can either use a fingerprint or a root certificate to create this trust. The fingerprint usually is only valid for a few months. We can use the root certificate to do this check if we do not want to change our sketch frequently. Let's now do some tests and start with HTTP request.ino and the fingerprint on the ESP8266. If we use a wrong fingerprint to access housemyssl.com, our sketch shows that the fingerprint does not match. But it continues and still gets uh, the response from the service as a JSON formatted text. To get it more readable, I paste it into a JSON interpreter. We see the rating of the ESP82's SSL library. Improvable. The same rating is given if we use the correct fingerprint. The wrong fingerprint does not hinder our connection, nor does it influence the rating. But we are not sure if we are really connected to housemyssl.com. A bad guy could have hijacked your connection to, for example, a porn site. Fortunately, also here I have a simple trick. As long as your ESP8266 does not become red or very hot, it is most probably not connected to a porn site. Or is this perhaps also fake news? The check of the fingerprint is done with this statement. If we delete these lines, we omit the check and our sketch works and creates encrypted connections for a long time. We continue with the HTTPS request CA cert example on the ESP8266, which needs a certificate. Unfortunately, this is more complicated. First, we go with our browser to the site we want to access. Choose the root certificate and copy it to a file. Let's call it housemyssl.cer. In Chrome, you can select the format. Choose the DER coded X509 format. If you open the CER file with your preferred text editor, you see this scrambled text. But our ESP8266 needs this nice looking hex format. This is why I wrote a small Python program which does that conversion for you. Just enter the file name of the DER coded file and run it in Python idle. Now you get the certificate including the necessary code which you can copy and paste into the Arduino IDE. This sketch runs now for a few years because it uses the root certificate. Problem solved for the ESP8266 at least. As usual, you find a link to the code and the Python programs in the video description. How much resources does the ESP8266 need? This sketch uses 31% flash and 37% dynamic memory with a fingerprint or a certificate. A non-secure sketch would use 24, respective 35%, around 30% less. This is acceptable for what we get. Let's continue with ESP32. There I only found an HTTPS example using a root certificate. The example is called Wi-Fi Secure. It does not behave like the ASP8266 where we have a separation between encryption and trust. With the ESP32, we need to set a CA certificate with the command client.setCACert. Then the client connect method uses this certificate and does not connect if it is not valid. So here you definitely need a certificate. Fortunately, it is not too complicated to get one. This time we export the root certificate in the X509 base64 format. Again, I wrote a small Python program which converts this certificate file in a text which we can copy paste into our example file. It looks different to the ESP8266 format, but the content behind the scenes is the same. The rest of the calls 
are the same as with HTTP. And if we call how's my SSL, we even get a probably okay, the same as with the Chrome browser. Not bad. Probably because it supports much more cipher suites and some other stuff. The ESP32, as usual, uses much more resources. 62% flash and 12% dynamic memory. Without encryption, it uses 46% or a third less flash. Summarized, we learned that public key cryptography is used to securely exchange symmetric keys between our ESP and the server. The public key is part of the certificate sent by the server to the ESP at the beginning of a session. The symmetrical keys allow an efficient encryption of the traffic during a session. All this is done by the secure libraries on the ESP8266 and the ESP32. With the ESP8266 you have three options. Using no certificate, a fingerprint or a certificate. I would not use a fingerprint unless it is valid for a long time, which is hardly ever the case. The ESP32 has a better library but needs a valid certificate if you want to use HTTPS. I wrote small Python programs to format both certificates as needed. Together with the other knowledge, it is easy to convert our sketches to HTTPS. I assume that parts of this know-how are also valid for other Arduinos using internet connections. New Arduinos have a cryptographic chip on board, which makes it even easier to deal with HTTPS. By the way, if your ESPs do not do what you want, you can switch debug message on, then you see what's up and maybe you find the problem. Not only to debug HTTPS code. I want to thank all my supporters on Patreon and viewers using my links for their purchases for supporting the channel. Without you, it would be difficult for me to do what I do now. Bye.